Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply, and this video is to bring you a closer look at the JL Industries. This is their new part number, RHDKIT-RetroSPR-G1. This is yet another new development from JL Industries when it comes to lifting mechanisms or shocks or scuttles or springs, uh, however they're being called from a variety of manufacturers, on their typical RH uh, D uh, roof hatches. Um, this is going to be a unit that is used to replace existing uh, lifting mechanisms and do so in such a way that uh, it's rendered compatible, uh, backwards compatible. Uh, in, a, in fact, I believe they say it's compatible with all old versions of roof hatches Activar has sold. So specifically from the manufacturer, what has occurred is this. Um, we continue to order and sell springs or lifting mechanisms. And one will come in and it has a different part number. And then we investigate with the manufacturer. Why is the part number different? Oh, we changed the design. Okay, thank you for telling us. Um, so then we've got, you know, one generation, then a replacement generation. Same scenario here, uh, where now they're saying that this will work all prior models. Uh, this very long part number, Retro Spring Dash G1, is going to replace their B002. Uh, they're B004. The only difference between those two is the quantity of springs. The A004 is a part number that we've seen. Um, and while they will continue, according to the manufacturer, to make this material, the, the original material, still available, um, moving forward, they're using the new design. Now, below this video is going to be a number of documents. Uh, a parts drawing for uh, the kit the roof hatch and all of its associated parts of which the new the retro uh, spring is is one of those items a technical drawing of everything you're going to get which we're going to go over in a moment you'll get a uh, installation instructions are listed down below whether you are upgrading replacing installing new isn't going to happen they're assuming that you are replacing existing okay um, and if you're if you're building your own roof hatch, um, unfortunately, let's not don't expect technical support from the factory, um, as this material is made specifically for their units. And in fact, if your unit is other than 36 wide by 30 deep, the factory wants you to communicate to them uh, through us to find out what spring combination you'll need to lift the weight of that lid, because the spring. Uh, lifting mechanisms are directly related to the uh, weight of the lid and, and therefore the composition whether it be steel or aluminum uh, the size that all conspires to say okay this is the spring uh, assembly that we need this is the bill of materials of appropriate springs that we would use um, also there is a document called the fourth document Installation instructions, the technical drawing, oh, the template. The, the, there will be included with the material, and I'll show it to you in a moment, a couple of decals that will go on the underside of the lid and then on the bottom of the curb to give you the ability to drill the new holes that the new mounting hardware will, will require, and then, of course, the parts drawing. Uh, and that's all listed down below here. Let's now take a look at all the parts that you're going to get. We'll take some dimensions of everything, and hopefully that will uh, permit you to determine whether or not this will be a suitable replacement for the unit that you're working on. And what I'd like to do is just simply go through the installation instructions as a guide to then go through each of the individual part numbers. Four-page document is included with the material, as are the templates. Um, and then some other stuff. Let's let's go through let's go through the installation instructions um, to uh, to clarify what what is in the box. Okay, so starting on page one, 
they're giving you an idea of general idea. The following guide provides instructions to stay, safely remove and replace the JL Industries roof hatch spring cylinders. Uh, a, a, it's an applicable for retrofit uh, units that would be the RHG-1, the RHGI-1 in a 36 by 30 size. The width is the first dimension on roof hatches. Um, other sized roof hatches might require, are going to require different size springs. You're going to need a 7 16th of an inch wrench, two half inch wrenches. I would think that a box wrench would be the best tool to use. You'll see later on down below where a couple of crescent wrenches may not work. Um, uh, a drill, you're going to need a power drill. You'll need a T30 Torx head bit. The compression tool is provided. The spring comp compression clamp tool is provided. They say the drill bit is provided. There's... Oh, there is a drill bit. Okay, I didn't see that in the parts. So yeah, there's a drill bit included. That's great. Okay, now uh, have those box wrenches and the two T30. You'll need that stuff. Um, everything else apparently is provided. Uh, they estimate two, two man, 30 minutes. Absolutely. Um, sure. Uh, roof hatch springs are under pressure. Please use the provided spring compression tools to remove and install spring cylinders. We recommend that installers use fall prevention safety equipment while performing this work. Absolutely. Uh, being on a roof, sure. Um, step one of the installation instructions, and we're, we're going through it so that we can talk about all the individual pieces. Open the roof hatch, engage the automatic hold open to hold the lid in the open position. The cylinder must be slightly compressed to remove it. So when you open that roof hatch lid, and engage the hold open arm, the spring is under the lifting mechanism is under some compression. It's not completely loose. There's still there's still compression on that spring. To compress, remove rectangular block from the end of the compression tool, shown below, it is shown below, and move washer to the end of the rod with the nut. So this is what we're talking about. This is the compression tool. Okay? You're going to literally remove the slot, the threaded block, unthread that. You're going to take all of this and fish it through the hole down in the top of the top telescoping tube, all the way down and out through the bottom. You're then going to get that threaded on there. You're going to rotate it till it stops. Let's go back to the installation instructions. Uh, Insert free end of the rod into the top of the cylinder, guiding the rod through the center of the spring until it protrudes from the bottom of the uh, bottom cylinder and foot. The foot is the sidewall bracket, the boot, I call it. Uh, screw rectangular block onto the end, protruding from the bottom cylinder by hand until it is snug against the bottom of the bracket, shown to the right. Uh, right, uh, shown the, the, the bracket of the... Uh, connecting the yoke of the top, the yoke of the upper cylinder, uh, upper telescoping tube, to the bracket of the lid. Make sure the holes in the cylinder top are facing the lid. Make sure the holes in the cylinder top. Let's take a look and see what that means. So it is not obvious to me what they mean in step six. Make sure the holes in the cylinder top are facing the lid. Um, there is a hole in the top of the, of, of the existing telescoping tube that will receive this threaded rod. Um, using the 7 16 wrench, tighten the threaded nut to compress the shock assembly. So at this point, this washer and welded on acorn nut are going to be captive, and you're just going to start tightening that, and that's going to draw that down. Once you can tell that you've compressed the, the, the lifting mechanism and perhaps you can grab the lifting mechanism tubes and confirm that those bolts have had tension removed, you can then remove bolt A, which is probably going to be a hex cap screw or a, 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 yeah, a hex cap uh, bolt with a uh, nylon lock nut, that sort of thing. 
and you'll be able to remove A. And I wouldn't worry about, you know, that compression coming off of, of the bottom. You certainly, you know, <laughs> it's under compression, but it won't be under very much compression because the lid's basically open. Uh, that's step seven. Step eight, remove steel cylinder top and, dis uh, and spring and discard. Then remove bolt B. That's going to be a bolt that will go through the bottom boot all the way through a hole drilled in the lower telescoping tube to another nut. Remove that. They're saying uh, discard. Um, I might find a box to put those in before I threw them away. It might be nice to have replacement parts. Uh, repeat steps two through eight if you have more than one lifting mechanism on the unit. Now, now it's time for the, the templates. You've got the hardware removed. Now you have to prep the lid and the curb. So there's the template. Um, and you're going to follow those installation instructions. Edge to be three and five eighths from bottom inside face of cover. So you're going to, in the drawing, they're, sta they're kind of showing to put it in the center of the unit which is a departure from how they normally are. Um, but that's how it's being done. Uh, this is obviously a, a two shock unit. Um, they have here one that is shown as a single shock in some photographs. Now the important part is edge to be three and five eighths from the bottom inside face of the cover. So that's going to be really important to position that correctly because I'm imagining this is self-adhesive. It is. Um, because the geometry of where the top mounting point and the bottom mounting point must be compatible and all that conspires to work compatibly with the length of the springs and the upper and lower tubes. Uh, so you're going to get the template applied. The bottom template on the curb uh, edge flush with bottom inside edge of curb. So that'll be tucked down all the way to the bottom. Uh, and at that point, you'll use your drill bit and your drill, and you will drill a total of uh, 14 holes. Yeah, 14 holes. I would center punch everything. I would double check everything. And, what, and this is really where the problem comes in when people order roof hatch uh, lifting mechanisms or shocks or scuttles, they say, hey, it doesn't work. Well, whose roof hatch do you have? Oh, I, I made one myself. Okay, so uh, there's we can't help, you know, it, where did you position it on the lid and on the sidewall? You know, how do we know it will even work? And that's really where people get tripped up trying to do retrofit work on their own um, when they are literally making material. It's, it's to be understood, regardless of the manufacturer of the roof hatch, their parts are engineered only for their items. That's it. If you're using it outside of that intended purpose, we're in uncharted territory is the bottom line. You'll drill 14 holes. I would certainly want to uh, center punch all of those holes after I've double checked to make sure that they're all accurate. Attach the new brackets for the lid and curb using the drill and your T30 Torx bit with the quarter 20 three quarter round head Torx self tapping screws. Yeah, they're, they're definitely self-tapping in the sense that there is, they're what I would call thread-forming screws. And I'm not a screw expert, but the edge of there is a thread-forming type profile. It's got a little prep in it that's going to clear out the chips. That's going to be your quarter 20. That's going to be your T30 Torx. So you're going to use all of those bolts, and so therefore there should be 14 of them. Indeed, there are 14. That's a nice touch, double-ended drill bit. Okay. At that point, you'll have the ability to get your top brackets installed, and keep note of how they're going to be installed. You know, they're they're going to look they're going to look like this when installed, not not like this. Let's take some basic dimensional properties of the. Uh, uh, the lid bracket. Overall height looks like it's about two and a half. Overall width about 15 sixteenths. Overall projection looks like it's about three inch. Okay, two of those brackets. 
Now your sidewall brackets or your boots, these might be steel. Yeah, definitely. Yep, as are the top brackets as well. So you'll get two of those, and again, be mindful of how they're to be installed. Uh, angled and towards the top. Let's take some dimensional properties of this. Overall width, about two and an eighth. Overall height, about an inch and three quarter. Overall projection, it's about an inch and three quarter. Okay. Now you've got all four of your brackets attached. We've accounted for two thirds of all the bolts in here, if not more, three quarter of them. Now we are moving to page three of the installation instructions. That's where you're going to, using the two wrenches, attach bottom spring housing cylinder to the curb bracket. <clears throat> so at this point, <clears throat> what you're dealing with now, here's what it all looks like. Whoops, I got that upside down. Here's what it all looks like. Okay. I would take the two springs, I'd put them on the side. I would take the top, and I would take my two bottom tubes, then using the two long uh, hex cap bolts, they don't give us a length with some nylon lock nuts. Let's take a couple of, let's take a dimensional property of that so we know. The length of the bolt, about two and a half inch, um, might be quarter twenty. I'd say probably quarter 20, it might be 5 16 but it looks like it's quarter 20. Okay, so your, your tube is going to go now into your boot, run that bolt through it. That bolt is also going to be what the springs will rest on when they get inside of there. Now, before you proceed, they in step 15, they want you to lubricate the springs with the grease provided. And indeed, <clears throat> grease is provided. Some white lithium grease. That's the part where I would have gloves, um, okay, and uh, you know some way by which I could, you know, coat them as best as possible. I would get all of it pulled out. I would use all of the grease. I would get that coated as best as possible as I can. Um, I might, uh, you know, come up with a way where I'm not going to create too much of a mess. I'd want to coat that because they're going to move. Um, they are made of steel, obviously, so they're going to be subject to corrosion naturally. But as white, as you know, much of it on there as you can. No need to overdo it. The quantity of white lithium is certainly not coincidental that they supply. So after you get that, um, these with the lithium applied, your springs are going to come down and through. <clears throat> and at that point, you're getting pretty close to being done. Now. <clears throat> Moving to step 16 with the springs lubricated and nested within the bottom cylinder. Obviously, make sure that that stays up. You don't want it to fall. Um, slide the top cylinder on top of the springs. Okay. Top tube comes in. This is where you're going to use the compression tool. Compression tool is included. And it is basically, you can see in the photographs, how this is going to work. You're going to get that, and I'm going to pick it up here. You're going to get that brought in like that. Okay. You are then going to get that handle pulled, and I'm obviously not going to be able to do it just with hand strength. Uh, but you won't need to compress it uh, extremely far, but it will compress and it's not that difficult to compress in fact it was easier than I thought so you'll get that compressed down now we've got some compression on that and it definitely compresses um, once you've got it compressed you're now going to use the final two hex cap bolts there are two of these with two more nylon lock washers and that's going to lock the upper assembly inch and a half long and that officially exhausts all the bolts that you have you've used all the lube you've used all of the with lithium grease you've used the templates you've used this compression tool you've used the other compression tool 
and all and the and the brackets are assembled. Uh, step now we're get to step 18 where you are going to. Um, I had mentioned box box wrenches earlier. It does not appear that they're that close to each other. So if you've got just crescent wrenches, which are probably more common um, for some people, you know, you might. Uh, it looks like that won't be a problem. Uh, it's obviously important that when you install the material with the template that you are observing the center line. So make sure that those center lines are exactly where they need to be. That's going to be crucial for it working correctly. Secure the top cylinder to the lid bracket using your half inch wrenches. Remove spring compression clamp tool. Manually open door to check for functionality. Make sure everything works correctly. The springs provide lift assistance while opening and closing the roof hatch door. And that is the balance of uh, all the installation instructions. So let's go over some dimensional properties of the tubes themselves. Now, what we get asked all the time is what is the length of the unit? <clears throat> What's the length of the spring or the length of the, the lifting mechanism? And the answer is we really don't know because... Um, the reason we don't know is because generally springs are going to be under compression. So the question is, this tool has some adjustment to it, but using it just the way that it was that it came from the factory, and it might need to be adjusted a little bit. When I compress that, I would like to be able to provide okay I've got to compress down and while those springs are hanging out at the bottom they certainly won't be when you have it completely engaged let's try that again I'm gonna pause this video so I can get it properly compressed okay, so I was able to get that compressed so that I can actually give you an idea of what that will measure when it is indeed compressed From the center center positions or the center points of the mounting, looks like it's about 12 and 3 quarter inch. From the center here to the center down where that bolt's going to be is 12 and 3 quarter. Okay. What it's going to be uncompressed, you know, um, this is, it should be noted, 12 and 3 quarter is the point of compression when the lid would be in the held open position. What it will be when it's when the lid is closed, I, I simply don't know what that what that would end up being because I don't have a I don't have a roof hatch here with one of these installed. Now let's take some dimensional properties of the parts themselves. <clears throat> Overall length of the top tube looks like it's about eight and three eighths. Okay. The outside diameter of the upper tube, 2.05, 2.05. From the back side of the tube to the center of the mounting holes, looks like it's about three and an eighth. Now let's take a look at the lower tube, its overall length. About nine and a quarter. Its diameter is 1.883. 1.883. There are two springs you probably have noticed. Um, It would be my opinion that two springs are utilized so as to give you the amount of torque necessary to safely operate the lid without giving you an overwhelming amount of force required to operate the lid or to have it move aggressively up. Um, obviously these two springs are going to have different compression rates and that must be the reason to have two springs would be my guess. Okay, There is obviously engineering behind this that I'm not aware of. The diameter of the larger spring is uh, 
uh, pardon me, 0 0.216, 0 0.216. The diameter of the smaller spring, 0 0.127, 0 0.127. The overall length of the outer spring, about 15 and an eighth. The overall length of the inner spring, again, about 15 and an eighth. That makes sense because they were flush. Okay, we've provided dimensional properties of everything. Hopefully all of that information permits you to be able to safely proceed with an upgrade to your existing unit. Um, or to whatever other means that you might apply this material to. Uh, there is a link below this video to the manufacturer's page where you can pull up not only all of the JL Industries products that we sell, but also a link to the manufacturer's website as well as a link to the full product catalog. The name JL Industries is synonymous with a number of things. Uh, JL, from JL, you're going to get roof hatches. You're going to get fire extinguishers and fire extinguisher cabinets. You're going to get access panels. Under JL, if I understand it correctly, is under Activar. Activar also has a trim and auxiliary company called Hiawatha. Uh, push plates, pull plates, pull handles, door stops, things of that nature. But then also air louvers. Air louvers is a funny name for a company that manufactures very high quality metal vision frames and louvers for use in steel and wood doors and we represent all three of those companies if you have any questions on the jl industries uh, retro spg one spring let's give you the right part number here forgive me this would be a rhd dash kit dash retro s pr dash g1 replacement spring or any other JL Industries product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you.